audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. Jesus said, If you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. The story of missions throughout church history is largely a disappointing account of stops and starts with more stops than starts. The church's reluctance to obey the Great Commission can be seen from its inception. Now, the first Christians were Jewish, and Jewish aversion to reach out to the Gentiles was epitomized by Jonah's rebellion against God's commission of him to go and preach to the city of Nineveh. Generally speaking, the Jews saw their task as one of separating as much as possible from the Gentiles rather than being a light to them, drawing them to God. This intensified as the Old Testament age passed into the intertestamental period and by the time of Jesus, the Jews avoided all possible contact with the Gentiles. Their theology of missions was based on their misconception of how God viewed the world. Their assumption was that because God hated the ways of the heathen, he therefore hated the heathen. Let's never forget that Jesus died for all sinful people, whoever and wherever they are. And where sin abounds, his grace abounds much more. This is Set Free with Ken Legg. Thanks for joining us. You're in for a conversation on sharing the gospel with author and pastor Ken Legg and myself, Phil Edwards. And it's an important point that you just raised there, Ken, in your introduction, that we're all familiar with the prejudice of the Jews against the Gentiles, yet we can be guilty of the exact same attitude towards, say, Muslims or towards homosexual people or or others without even realising it. Yes, I'm amazed uh, at the amount of anti-Muslim rhetoric that exists amongst Christians today. I often receive emails that seem to be more fear-based or, can I say, hate-based. It seems that Christians will do anything they can, for example, to keep Muslims from coming to this country. Now, I understand the concerns that are at the basis of those feelings, but what amazes me is that we have been commissioned to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Mm. Now, there's a large segment of the world that is closed off to Christian missionaries. This is called the the 1040 window. And about 95% of the unreached world lives in this window. Now, here's an incredible thing. We can't go to them, but God is bringing them to us. Mm. Now, are we so insecure in our faith that Christians will maybe convert to Islam? Do we fear that? Let's let's see this rather as an opportunity to reach out with the gospel to those who have never been exposed to the love of God through Christ. It's a pretty challenging and amazing uh, change of mind, isn't it? You use the analogy of Jonah to illustrate uh, our aversion to taking the gospel to people who might have been enemies of the people of God. Can you enlarge on that one a little? Yeah, everyone knows about Jonah, of course, but just looking at the circumstances behind the scene, if you like, Jonah has been described as the reluctant prophet. He was sent to a, a city called Nineveh. Now, Nineveh was the capital of Assyria, and Assyria was a world power at that time, but uh, they dominated the nations around them, and they triumphed over those nations, and when they did that, then they demanded a tributary system to be fed into that nation. So every year, somebody would have to come up and bring tribute to that nation, you know, pay, pay over a yep. lot of money. Yep. And, and the way that they kind of enforced that was through a system of fear. Uh, for example, they, you know, if, if some country didn't pay up on time, they would just swoop down on the country and leave their calling card. Now, their calling card was usually something like a pyramid of decapitated heads. Yes. Uh, so that instilled fear into all the nations, and so they said, you better pay up on time. So people hated the Assyrians, and of course Jonah was a very patriotic prophet. So he didn't want Assyria to even exist. So when God sent a message of salvation to the Assyrians through Jonah, you know, said, go and preach to them to repent. He went in the opposite direction. He said, then no, you can understand why. Exactly. You know, it's better that they be wiped out. But I love the story. In fact, I preached on Jonah just recently and uh, I called it, Phil, um, a beached whale and a bleached prophet. <laughs> because, <laughs> you know, we know the story that Jonah was thrown overboard and he was swallowed by the big fish. And then it says, the Bible says that, uh, you know, the fish vomited him up on dry ground. Well, for him to do that, then you'd assume that the, the, the whale would have been beached. And so Jonah being inside the whale for that uh, amount of time, he would have been bleached. His skin would have been bleached. I mean, there's, it's a great way to get the attention of those that you're sent to, isn't it? It just goes to show that God can use anybody. He, he sent him to, to go and do a thing 
and he ended up getting there. And can you imagine what he looked like and smelt like when he yeah. came out of that fish? <laughs> yeah. You know, people wouldn't have wanted to hear what he had to say in the first place, let alone now. <laughs> the locals were saying, what the? Who the <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> but, you know, so he went there, he delivered his message, which incidentally was not even a call to repent. It was, it was delivery of a sentence. In 40 days, mm. Nineveh will be overthrown. It's the end, you know. But I guess the people must have thought, well, why would God send a prophet to us if there was no hope? He would just destroy us. No, no, no need to warn us if he's going to do it. So they did repent. But in the meantime, Jonah went outside, and of course it was hot. You know the story. And there was the plant that grew, and he, he rested under the shade of the plant. But then God sent this worm to devour the plant. Mm. He got angry because his plant was eat, eaten up. And so God said to him, have you got justification for being angry? And he said, yes, I have. So God said, well, you know, you're angry about this plant. And yet my concern is about this city in which there are about 120,000, by the way, who can't discern their right hand from their left hand, which I, I take to be people under the age of three. Yeah. And so this city is doomed for destruction, but I care about this city. I want this city to be spared. You're angry about the plant. I'm really concerned about the people. And, and then we, we read that the book just closes on that, that note. So people say, well, how did Jonah respond to that? And, of course, the answer is it doesn't matter. It's not about Jonah. It's about God's heart. We've seen God's heart for the lost. He cares about people who are rushing headlong into judgment. That's why we are sent with the best news to go into all the world and preach the gospel of salvation. I think we could do well to get that same principle that it's not about us. You know, It's about what God wants to do and and other people, You know, seeing them come into a realization of who God is. Just thinking back to your introduction, Ken, you talked on uh, the Jews. You know, they were really hesitant, uh, one might say appalled at the thought of going to reach out to the Gentiles with the gospel. Yeah, you know, you even see that in the early part of the Acts of the Apostles. For example, um, uh, Peter, you know, needed a vision from heaven to know that it's okay to share the gospel with Cornelius. Mm. And even then he was called to give an account to the rest of the, you know, what do you think you're doing uh, to the rest of the disciples? Um, we see that a kind of a reluctance. In fact, it took persecution to to push the early church out into Judea and Samaria to take the gospel there. And uh, it wasn't until Paul arrived on the scene that a deliberate policy of missions to the Gentiles was undertaken. So what about those original disciples of Jesus? Did they ever become missionaries, do you think? Uh, would, would you like to think that you know all the training that Jesus gave them and the commission that he entrusted them to to go into all the world and preach the gospel actually paid off? Well, tradition tells us that it did. Uh, for example, Bartholomew, according to tradition, uh, went to Armenia, took the gospel there. Thomas went to Parthia, Persia, India. Uh, Matthew took the gospel to Ethiopia. James the Younger uh, took it to Egypt. Jude to Assyria and Persia. And Mark t- took it to Alexandria. So when you look at that, you know we see that they did move out with the gospel. In fact, let me read to you um, what Justin Martyr wrote. Now, Justin Martyr was a leader in the church around about 150 AD. And he said this. He said, There is no people, Greek or barbarian, or of any other race, by whatever appellation or manners they may be distinguished, however ignorant of arts or agriculture, uh, whether they dwell in tent or wander about in covered wagons, among whom prayers and thanksgiving are not offered in the name of the crucified Jesus to the Father and Creator of all things. So, if you like, by the end of the first century, the gospel had been taken as far as Mesopotamia and Parthia in the east and Gaul and Spain in the west. Now, what I see in all this, uh, Phil, is um, a combination of God's sovereignty and human responsibility. God has commissioned us to take the gospel to all the nations. Uh, that's our responsibility. Now, from his point of view, he's going to see to it that the church does do that. Uh, he'll use whatever means it, it will take to get us to take the good news of salvation to a dying world. Some practical help on sharing the gospel this week and we'll continue the conversation tomorrow. Until then, remember you don't have to carry that baggage. God wants you to be set free. For books, DVDs, small group studies and other resources from Ken Legg and details about Ken's ministry, shop online at vision.org.au. 
That's vision.org.au. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.